frankly, there's no reason to have it up there. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will be getting started in just one minute. Perfect. Hello and welcome again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are really excited to get started. We have slated about 45 minutes for the session today. So we, and we do have a large turnout. So all lines have been placed on mute for um, during the session. However, we still would like to keep um, the experience as interactive as possible for everyone. So please feel free to chat all of your questions in the chat box below on your screen. And we are look forward to receiving them. Without further ado, I will pass it. I will pass the mic over to our host for today, our vice president at my bar, Jory Weissman. Jory, take us away. Thanks so much, Maria, and thank you all for being with us today. Greatly appreciate that as we embark on our webinar for Cleared for Takeoff as we explore opportunities for terminal management optimization. Um, and uh, just a couple of quick notes. Uh, presentation today is brought to you by our team here at mybar.net. Over the past 30 years, we have been helping organizations across various industries optimize business process with uh, implementation and integration services. We have a team of in-house experts who really delve into the nuances of business process and uh, help you to realize uh, those, those objectives. Um, as we think about our agenda for today, um, I'm going to take a, a look at cloud adoption and digital transformation in general, um, certainly as a organizations in attendance that are to be considered critical infrastructure. I think we have to focus on uh, why organizations are rapidly moving to the cloud and why that may be important for uh, your teams. Um, we'll then focus on the NetSuite business management application and what NetSuite is doing in particular to help facilitate that digital transformation. And then we'll be looking at the MyBar terminal management application for NetSuite, which is a bundle of functionality that we have wholly embedded within that application, which runs seamlessly on that NetSuite platform. Uh, that's going to help in areas around contract management, billing, and, and other ground services features. So uh, thorough agenda for sure. And uh, let's begin. Um, we think about the digital transformation process. One of the things that we focus on is infrastructure. And you think about the fact that uh, today's billing and accounting systems, financial management applications are typically or had historically been run on on-premise environments. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, creates a good deal of uh, risk, but also creates a good deal of, of, of concern from an infrastructure standpoint. Uh, expense associated to upgrading uh, those platforms, uh, the liability associated to managing those platforms, whether you're thinking about uh, server operating system upgrades, uh, database upgrades, keeping ap applications in sync with those uh, platforms, and, and of course, the nightmares with desktop deployment of software uh, certainly could be very, very challenging. And uh, as we think about that aging infrastructure, moving that to the cloud certainly eliminates a lot of those headaches. The other focal point we tend to see is user productivity and uh, being tasked with doing more with, with less, with less resources, uh, being tasked with managing not just the transactional uh, functions, but also uh, the subjective content uh, about messaging and uh, attachments and other things that are associated to business process up to and including workflow and the integration of business applications and email through workflow, uh, people are really keenly focused on ensuring user productivity is maximized and we'll be able to look at some of the elements of NetSuite and what they're doing to help facilitate that. Um, and then of course, um, this conversation would not be complete without thinking about the concept of business risk and uh, looking even at most recent headlines today as it relates to cybersecurity and the crypto lock virus. 
uh, having that risk uh, associated to virus remediation and prevention, redundancy and failover, uh, certainly uh, having applications uh, hosted in the cloud, uh, and most importantly, having your platform in the cloud uh, is going to go a long way to help mitigate a lot of that risk and uh, make the, the data accessible anytime, anywhere. Um, we also recognize that in today's businesses and modern terminal management, uh, your database has rapidly expanded, being able to track not just, as we talked about a few moments ago, the transactional data, but being able to track the subjective content, the uh, myriad of attachments and emails and communication that's taking place uh, between you and your tenants at the, at the terminal and you or the carriers. Um, and uh, whether it's financial data that's now sitting offline in spreadsheets and transactional data that's in your billing system, having a single repository to host all of that information is becoming critical, especially when you think about having you know, all of those different silos of data and the servers that are typically required uh, to maintain that data. And then of course, integrating all that data, um, no, no easy task. Uh, and lastly, the need for standardization. Uh, understanding that uh, organizations that may have multiple subsidiaries or multiple locations want to have a unified set of practices and policies, whether it's security standards, whether it's uh, operational execution, want to be able to standardize that and, and certainly having a singular cloud platform to manage all of that information uh, is, is helpful in that regard. And one such organization that uh, we've, we've aligned with uh, gosh, about 15 plus years ago, um, is NetSuite. And uh, NetSuite uh, is arguably one of the leaders or the leader in the space for mid-market financial management uh, software. Um, and they have a platform that provides a whole host of functionality, uh, as well as uh, data redundancy and resiliency that uh, can manage your business effectively. And when we think about the NetSuite platform, I'd kind of like to turn this slide a little bit on, on its side and really give you a different look at the component parts because one of the things that's most attractive about cloud architecture is the actual platform itself. And what the platform being built for the cloud means that it is multi-tenant by nature. Right, built on the entire Oracle stack and designed to run an entire business. Uh, and most importantly, having everyone being on the same release. One of the biggest issues organizations have is the periodic upgrades or the challenges associated to periodic upgrades. And what the uh, NetSuite team is committed to doing is making two releases each year uh, so that you will be able to enjoy a whole host of new functionality, a whole host of new security features and benefits but not compromise the integrity of the personalization that you've done uh, within that platform. Secondarily, you have the actual core of the application suite. Suite focus predominantly on ERP and financials, but certainly human capital management and CRM are uh, increasingly uh, important in, in today's modern business. Being able to run this on a stack they call One World, which enables us to run multiple subsidiaries, whether that's US-based subsidiaries or, or international subsidiaries, um, and being able to manage things like tax compliance, financial reporting, currency conversion, all of that stored in one master database. And then of course, layered on top of that becomes the industry specific applications of which our airport terminal management application would be amongst them, but they service obviously a variety of different industries. And laid on top of that becomes the business intelligence, whether it's KPIs and dashboards, which we will look at momentarily, uh, financial reporting or general analytics, and being able to leverage higher order functions such as uh, AI and machine learning are all built in the subsequent releases that are, are coming out of, out of Oracle NetSuite. And what's beautiful about this platform is again, it will upgrade seamlessly uh, each and every time they make a release within the software. So let's focus a little bit on, uh, on, on terminal management. And we're gonna focus in on what we call achieving terminal velocity. Um, and when we focus in on terminal management, we know it the, the, the life's blood of uh, terminal management uh, operation is managing contracts, uh, managing the, uh, uh, the carrier use uh, lease agreements, uh, tenant use lease agreements, uh, we've created uh, support for, for that functionality. 
Secondarily, managing escalations of those contracts. We know that you're dealing, signing multi-year agreements with the various carriers and tenants um, and building in escalations and managing those escalations is of critical importance to make sure that your billing is accurate and in conformity with the contracts. Um, and then we know that there is a lot of ramp services applications, uh, uh, services activities rather that uh, are, are being engaged in and they need to be billed and they need to be billed accurately. So we've developed some uh, ramp service requests and billing applications that will provide proof of delivery and automated billing processes to really streamline that process. So the goal is to reduce day sales outstanding, but you do that first and foremost by making sure you're billing things accurately and then secondarily making sure you're billing things in a timely fashion these ramp services applications can certainly help to facilitate that we also know that budget management is important and native to netsuite is the capability of being able to track costs and expenses for various projects so whether you're redoing runways or uh, making a new you know customer lounge or some area being developed within the terminal being able to manage cost containment around those areas to set budgets to be able to track uh, the expenditures based upon those budget areas without corrupting the chart of accounts uh, is certainly of critical importance and uh, being able to manage that in a platform like NetSuite uh, would, again, help to eliminate some of those silos. Um, and then the ability to integrate customer and vendor portals. We can show you some different examples of tools that we've built that are connected into the NetSuite environment that uh, facilitate uh, customers not only visualizing um, transactional information, uh, but also originating transactional information uh, directly through a portal. And of course, credit and collections management and managing the day sales outstanding, as I alluded to a few minutes ago, and focusing on, on some of those, those key areas. So before we dive into some of the specifics of terminal management, I think it's probably important for us to take a quick look at NetSuite itself to understand the core of the foundation and what the application can deliver. You'll notice I'm running uh, NetSuite here in a browser. It's entirely browser-based application, so there's no need to load software locally on the PCs, and that eliminates one of the headaches, certainly. And of course, the back end is running in the NetSuite cloud, so there's real no server or infrastructure need to be concerned with. This will run on virtually any size device, tablet, PC, uh, smartphone. They even have apps that are available that you can get this information delivered uh, to your uh, PDA or smartphone. Um, runs on both Android and, and Apple, so that is available. I happen to be running in a Chrome browser right now, but you can run this on Edge, Internet Explorer, Firefox, anything of your choosing, pretty much browser agnostic. I am logged in today uh, in the role of a controller. Um, NetSuite is entirely roles-based solution, so I'm here functioning as James, and the content that's being presented to me in my role is predicated on, on my role and is customizable completely. We can personalize the experience in the dashboard, what we're viewing, and the different portlets of information that's being presented, and they take on different forms. One might be reminders, which would be representative of various workflows that uh, perhaps uh, some other department processed a transaction that requires my attention and maybe I have some transactions that I need to approve or payments. Maybe I'm a control that likes to be hands-on. I want to selectively pick and choose and select all the bills I want to pay. I'll have that capability of drilling in and these become my action lists or reminders to keep me apprised of activities that I need to engage in to take care of things. Alternatively, over here to the right side, I see here I have a series of key performance indicators. Again, I can curate this list as I want to through the setup function and having the ability to add uh, KPIs. And there are scores of KPIs based upon the individual role that come out of the box. And we can create custom KPIs, so delivering expiring contracts or other things uh, that MyBar may have created for the software can be delivered right to the dashboard. And you can position them and change thresholds and how information is being presented to you so you can create an experience that's going to highlight key pieces of information and then give me the ability, if and when I want to, to drill down into something like right-clicking on the income statement and being able to, and I'll just make this a little bit larger, being able to get an income statement presented to me uh, where I'm taking a comparative view because I said, let's look at it by accounting period versus any one of the other metrics that I may have. So you really have a multi-dimensional view, a native built-in financial report writing tool. This can bring budgets, 
uh, versus actual. Uh, this can bring departmental visualizations, class level visualizations, or across subsidiary, across accounting periods. Very flexible. I'm not going to take too deep of a dive because we could spend an hour on financials alone. Uh, we know that that is the life's blood of the business, but just wanted to convey that this information is, is ma managed wholly within the NetSuite experience. Also just want to point out communication of this information, whether we can schedule these things, uh, reports to be sent out to key executives, even uh, members that are external to the organization. If I'm sending information such as dunning notifications to carriers, um, if I'm sending uh, invoices out to uh, various uh, tenants, I certainly have that capability to schedule, email, and export any of the data. It comes out seamlessly basically set a timer and it's in a position to, to do the rest of the work for you. Um, opened up the bill payment screen before just to give you an example of that and have the ability to just simply navigate through in a very simple, easy to use intuitive style interface, um, clicking save and then being able to process these transactions quite easily. All of that was accessed right through my dashboard. I also have the capability of getting list views of data integration of charts and graphs and other data elements, even advanced financial ratios and analysis. All of this comes out of the box so that we don't have to spend a good deal of time configuring it. Again, you can personalize this experience, but it was important to note. I'm going to also just point out one other thing to you, the concept of a universal search feature. So whether I'm searching for vendors or customers or invoices or any type of transaction, having the ability here to search in here, and I have... Uh, an account that I've called Belkin Airlines. And uh, if I wanna go and view what our customer account looks like for Belkin Airlines, I can see here, I've got you know name and address and all the usual information. But one area I wanted to focus in here uh, was the concept of communications. And we talk about workflow and we talk about being able to uh, really proactively notify uh, internal users or external organizations about things that are taking place. Uh, being able to manage uh, messaging. So whether I'm sending out invoices or uh, maybe it's ramp service orders that have taken place and uh, being able to integrate this with tools like DocuSign for electronic signature capture and proof of delivery that can all be managed and maintained directly within the NetSuite application. Integration of all of your activities, whether it's follow-up calls uh, on collections, right? Being able to automate the emailing of invoices, collections and dunning notifications uh, as we all know how wonderful the airlines can be at paying those bills, we want to be able to stay on top of that and uh, be able to log and manage that information. And the other thing I wanted to point out is the concept of files and attaching into this one singular repository all of that information that may be floating around, not only in email, but in file cabinets or in shared drives or things of that nature. Um, we may have an example of a Word document that uh, contains the 2021 contract renewal for Belkin Airlines and being able to have that all integrated uh, within one place for us to visualize. And the last thing I'll point out is I change roles, right? If I shoot over to the role of what we'll call an AP analyst, then the visualizations I'm going to see are going to be very, very different. Right, so now my navigation portlet is going to just focus on those things that an AP analyst would be concerned with. And, you know, maybe it's just looking at payables transactions or running specific reports. So we can really uh, curate a list of access to programs or visualizations that are going to be different based upon that user. Um, and again, out of the box, it comes with scores of these different things that can be, can be easily manicured. So just wanted to point out these couple of things as a backdrop as we go through some of the contract specific things. I uh, thought it was important to just look at some of the core uh, basic functionality uh, that is built into the, into the NetSuite platform. I'm gonna take a couple of minutes and take a little bit of a deeper dive and I'm gonna drill into a, again, a view of a customer uh, file, this time in a test mode. And we do this just to make sure we're securing data and you know presenting stuff that's kind of kind of agnostic. And if you'll notice on the customer file, one area, in addition to the communications and things that I showed you a few moments ago that I did not delve into is the concept of item pricing and being able to define what an individual airline's active or current price might be for any one of the various services that we're billing for or providing. Uh, so if I'm looking at uh, 
a ground handling turn on an A320, I could see as I scroll over to the right, uh, that uh, this uh, carrier is spending $2,000 per turn um, to, to manage that process. So the next question is, all right, this is actually more of a, uh, a blown up view of that. Um, how did we get there? And we got there because we defined within the customer a contract itself. So drilling into this, I've got my airline, Belkin Airlines. I've got a, a contract term with the commencement date of January 1st, 2021. And we see an expiry date of 12-31-2022. So this is going to be a two-year contract. There are some additional data points that can be managed through here, certainly dragging and dropping files, contracts, and attachments. That's all native part of the capability. But what I wanted to point out here is that here is the list of active contract prices, again, in different visualization. And I'm going to focus in on our ground handling uh, turn for the A320 at $2,000. And that we see that uh, that is active from 1 1 2021 through 12 31 21. So we know the contract lasts through 2022, but this contract line only lasts through 2021. And why is that? We'll focus on that in a moment. When we look at these contract lines, we know there can be scores of them, in some instances, hundreds of them, based upon the different aircraft the carrier can be provided. And so what we've done is we've categorized them into different groups, making it easy to find. So all a user would need to do was look up a contract for Belkin Airlines, focus in on a particular category of transaction uh, or line item, and then be able to see the visualization of that price point. But again, I wanted to talk about escalation because we know what's going to happen on 1230, 20, uh, 12 31 2021. This line expires, yet the contract does live on. Well, let's see how that's managed. That is managed in an area on this contract line that we call an escalation. So we see that this contract has an end date of 2021, but what's going to happen here on 1 1 2022? we're going to have an escalation of a fixed percentage that is going to go into effect and turn this into an active price point. And this is really critical. So in this part of this bundle is procedures will be running every evening. This will scan through the contract lines, find the expiration date, and be able to put in fact uh, the effective date of the new item. And the escalation can be managed in, in various ways. It can be managed as a fixed percentage, which we said in this instance, it's going to be by contract, a 3% escalation. It can be a fixed dollar amount. It could be a nominal amount. It can even be associated to a consumer price index reference where you can store consumer price index. And if it's indexed in that way, certainly then the pricing can move with whatever the CPI might be at that point in time where the contract goes into effect. So. Managing contract escalation is a key part of compliance, and we've got that uh, built in to the terminal management contract application. At the end of the day, what ends up happening is as sales transactions are processed, you'll notice here that our ground handling turn for $2,000, and we've done 15 turns that we're billing for in this particular reporting period, it's going to extend out our pricing. Um, it's identified for us a, a, a profit center Right, so that has GL implications. So that when we produce our our, our, our PNL documentation, being able to run that by profit center, this is all segmented by reporting. Bring it to our item category. We know that it's categorized by ground handling charge. So not only did it make that inquiry easier, certainly makes all of our analysis easier as we look at ground handling fees across the broad spectrum of contracts that we may have, and we see what contract name and customer did this price get derived from. So we have on our invoice, the audit control to know that and confidence to know we've got the right pricing that's put in place, but we also have the sense of what contract this came from, what the GL implications are, what our analytic groups all tied into this nice, nice neat package facilitates our analysis and, and other reporting tools. And this is just a, a, a more of a drill down look at that line. Again, taking us back, to that contract management. We talked about the concept of having different item categories. We talked about a contract dating. We talked about escalations. We talked about automation that creates the escalated processes for us dynamically. So we have the complete confidence that the, 
the system is billing accurately. Other areas that we focused on, we looked at some uh, ground services applications. And what we did is we integrated the concept of bringing power apps to the equation. One of the things that we noticed is that we obviously wanna be able to create a mobile experience and be able to create a very malleable mobile experience. So MyBar has spent a lot of time working in the Microsoft Power Apps community and having these applications work interactively through the API structure, through the platform that Oracle NetSuite brings to the table has opened up tremendous possibilities. I'm gonna show you some exciting examples of that. Also have the capability of integrating tools like Microsoft Power BI to be able to visualize the information. Certainly you saw, saw within NetSuite, a comprehensive set of financial management reports, analytic tools that are there. Uh, Power BI brings many other things to the table or enables us to integrate other data sources. Uh, so if we do need to get a a uh, con consolidated view of data for things that may live outside of NetSuite. Uh, Power BI gives us that capability and we can connect that certainly to NetSuite. We're gonna focus here on Power Apps. And here's an app that we've created for ground services and uh, really interesting. So record the person's name who's re recording the data or who's requested the service. We identify who the customer is that uh, we're, we're processing for. Right? In this case, it's gonna be Belkin Airlines recorded the flight number that it is associated to. We're gonna process a standard order. We know that the flight date and time, um, if there's multiple flight numbers that this is associated to, we can, we can add that and we click the add lines button. Once we click the add lines button, we're gonna be presented with data with, for any of the ancillary ground services that we may be providing, whether it's maybe an aerial tower or a start unit um, or any other piece of data. Um, that we may want to record. Maybe it's a special cleaning services, maybe it's special wheelchair services, anything that the terminal is gonna be billing a carrier for uh, that we wanna capture at that point of transaction, uh, we can manage that information here through the app. We've created this order, gives us a confirmation screen. We have the ability to add and edit lines as we need to, which we can certainly do. And then I can submit this transaction. Once I've submitted this transaction, perhaps I want to capture a signature of the person that requested it. If that's the case, this can be built into the technology. Otherwise, it can be emailed out through DocuSign and managed in some alternative way as well. We've got both built into our application. So if this is a, a service order that's transacted and point of delivery is captured, we're going to do that right on the PDA. That information is going to be stored, moved right into the NetSuite application. Um, if it's going to be signed later, as we'll indicate here, then you'll have the capability of managing that through DocuSign where we're going to send that to the, uh, to the main office of the, of the customer in that instance. I'm going to capture this or ref capture refusal information and be able to move on. We've also created a specific order type for de-icing and de-icing fluid management, uh, being able to capture that information. Again, a lot of similar data is gonna be caught here, uh, but we are gonna see some additional data points that is associated to uh, managing and transacting on uh, de-icing. And again, similar process, up to and including being able to track the materials, taking images of the meters, if we want to, being able to track uh, meter readings, uh, that can all be stored within here. Does a calculation based upon the starting and ending, capture the signature, submit the order and move that through. This is Power Apps fully integrated into the Oracle platform running on a really any device. Uh, we've got them running on smartphones, tablets. Um, it certainly can be done in the back office as a PC process. But if you think about the concept of being able to seamlessly capture this information and get that instantly build in NetSuite, that's really what this is all about. Additionally, we built some applications around airline portal management, being able to do really two different scenarios. One might be a back office function to control the billing. Uh, the other might be uh, self-reporting, right? In some organizations, the airlines do self-report and submit their documentation or might be coming online to process their transactions uh, for, the, for the month. Um, it, we also can 
uh, create integrations that may be taking it from uh, airport tower control or other, other uh, sources of that data. Uh, we can speak with you about your specific circumstance, uh, but certainly integration is an option or a portal like this where Belkin may log in, uh, enter a portal. And if you notice, one of the other things it can do is also review previous transactions, review open accounts receivable, being able to visualize their information through traditional portal is also available. Right. We're able to upload files. So I've got a customer that's loading in files, uh, want to be able to provide the proof of whatever information they're about to record, uh, whether that's tower logs or any other piece of information that's gonna back up or function as support for the entries that are being made, uh, that can be uh, accessed and attached. Again, this will migrate into NetSuite, create an invoice within NetSuite, uh, and also be able to uh, house the attachment uh, that has been submitted by the, uh, by the carrier uh, into NetSuite as well. And just to take you through the process. The idea here was to create an intuitive fluid process where the user uh, can just simply be guided through in a simple Q&A style way of capturing the essential data that is important for creation of the billing, right? So capturing the airport arrivals, capturing, uh, capturing the total departures, uh, deep, uh, deplaned passengers, outbound bags, fuel, all right, in plane passengers, All right? And then into the detailed ground handling, right? And turns and run information, um, cargo information. So we can define the specific number of flights, the specific data that has been uh, captured here, then will be submitted. And I'm just gonna scroll through just to give you a sense of uh, you know, the various entries that can be made and then be able to get a summarized screen of all of the data, giving the uh, portal user the ability to edit this information, ensuring that it's accurate. We see the attachment is here, um, having you know, all the usage and convenience capabilities one would want uh, to be able to really navigate through this in, a, in, a, in an easy way. And by hitting the proceed button, uh, being able to confirm certify that the information that's being submitted is accurate and getting that information uh, presented into uh, the back end of the, of the NetSuite system. So as we think about the overall solution set, um, the MyBar bundle of software that promotes contract management um, is offered in two different packages. The terminal management for NetSuite um, is uh, contract management, which runs out at $999 per month for the airline and, and tenant uh, pricing management solution. And the ground services application also runs out at $999 a month. And that includes the power app, that includes the portal entry process, um, all of the functionality that you saw there. Um, we are making some special arrangement available for people in attendance today. If you do schedule a consultation appointment with us to talk about how we can help you to improve your business process and uh, take advantage of NetSuite and some of these capabilities, um, we are uh, offering a 10% a discount on a one-year subscription. If you take on a two-year NetSuite subscription, you will go to a 15% discount off this licensing. And if you take on a three-year uh, NetSuite subscription, we will offer multiple discounts uh, up to 40%. And if you buy both, combining both, you will enjoy a 40% NetSuite subscription discount on three years, 30% on two years, and 20% on one year if you buy both of the applications. So MyBar is committed to helping organizations uh, improve their business process. Uh, we think that uh, having contract management applications such as uh, we've just described for you is a critical uh, part of that. Digital transformation in general is another critical part of that. And having a comprehensive, well-supported solution from a company like Oracle NetSuite um, really brings all of that together in a safe and secure way. Um, so again, we'd love to get a chance to speak with you. We see there's lots of people in attendance here today, and uh, we'd love to be able to uh, find out what your current situation is, 
um, what software solutions you're using, what some of the pain points are, and how we can help close those gaps on contract management and ground service uh, support services. So thank you again uh, for joining with us. I hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation. Um, please do visit us at mybar.net um, or click the QR code with your camera on the screen here. Um, and that'll lead you to the consultation page where uh, we can then uh, schedule our time to meet. Uh, thank you again and appreciate uh, your, your time today. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tori. Um, thank you everyone again for joining. We'll be sending everyone a link to the recording for today's session. So we look forward to hearing from you guys and look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye now.